Hey, welcome to this video. My name is Tom Sønergaard and I'm the founder of the movement The Last Reformation. Maybe you have seen some of our movies, The Last Reformation, The Life, The Last Reformation, The Beginning of Seven Days Adventure with God. I want to do a video here I think that is very, very important where I'm going to say something I haven't said before. And I know that this video is going to shock many of you out there. It's going to come as a surprise. In this video, I want to talk a little about Todd Bentley and how he actually came to Denmark many years ago. 17 years ago, I invited him to Denmark. And that, was, that meeting with Todd was actually one of the reasons I left the prophetic or charismatic movement. I also want to share in this video an um, experience I had 10 years ago where a prophet came to me and prophesied over me or came with a word and actually prophesied over what is happening right now in these days. And I hope you will listen to this video. I hope you receive what I'm saying, even if it comes as a surprise for many of you and come as a shock. And I hope you also would feel my heartiness in this. I am going to say some names because I'm going to tell my story. And when I say those names I'm going to say in this video, it's not because, uh, let's say like that, I don't want to criticize where they are today because some of those people I'm going to say the names on is 10 years ago. And I don't know where they are today. And they have changed. I have changed. I know I have changed a lot the last 10 years. So it's not to point fin fingers. It's not to just criticize every person by the name the names I'm saying of those persons, but it's more to just give you an idea of the journey I have been on. So I hope you are ready to receive what I have to say here. A little update first for you who maybe don't know of what is happening. The last weeks, there have been a lot of talk online about an evangelist called Todd Bentley. He has a ministry called Fresh Fire. He was part of a big uh, revival in Lakeland 10 years ago. And there have been a lot of talk about him the last weeks because they have come out that, that he have had different sexual sins and a lot of things have happened. So when I start now, I want to say again, when I say the names, it's not to just point fingers. Uh, we are all on a journey. We are all learning. And I have learned a lot myself the last years. The reason I say the names is if I don't say any names, people will start to think, oh, I'm speaking about this person and this person and this person. And then I just want to be honest and, and say it as it is. Okay, let us start. I want to take you on a journey. Um, when I got saved in 1995, it's many years ago, I got saved in, uh, in the faith movement church, a church called Word of Faith. And I got saved then in Denmark, and because I got saved in that church, I got introduced to the faith movement, to the charismatic movement, very, very fast, and to the prophetic movement. And uh, I listened to that. That was what I got in as a new believer. And as a new believer, you don't ask questions. You don't ask questions in the beginning and think, is there something wrong there? Is there something wrong there? And the word is saying this instead, because I was new. So as a new believer, I just received everything that came in. But that was my background, and I was part of this. And because I was part of this, one of the guys I actually started to listen to was Todd Bentley. And uh, I, was, I listened to a lot of things with Todd Bentley at that time, back in 2001 and two and three. And I listened to Todd Bentley and Rick Joyner and and, uh, and Morning Star, and I was listening to the music, and, and it was my background, it was where I came from. And at that time in 2000 and 2001, I personally was fasting 40 days, and I was seeking God, and I experienced a breakthrough and started to see people get healed and set free, and, and, and God uh, put me into kind of ministry as an evangelist, and, and I always, in the beginning, I look up to Todd because Todd Bentley, he's the same age as me. We're the same age, uh, but he was so much further ahead than I was at that time. And I was listening to him and, and some of the stories he told, some of the testimonies he told about his spiritual experience. I had many spiritual experiences myself, but not like him. And I was very um, uh, 
I was really like drawn to him in the beginning and some of the things he said. I remember one testimony he shared was in one of his visitation to heaven. He came to heaven and God, he put him on an operation table. And God, he came down with a kind of a knife and cut him up. And in the vision, God took out all clean, uncleanness, all sin and bad character. And he took all of this out of thought. And then God put holiness in him. He put character in him. He put a lot of good things in him and then put him together again. Because God told Todd that what he wanted to do in Todd's life was so big that he needed character, he needed holiness, but God did not have the time to do it any other way in Todd's life, so he do, did it that way. And of course, today when I hear that, I, I, I'm shaking my head that, I don't see God work like that. Uh, God have good time to wait for us to build character, to build holiness, to go to a desert, to learn, to really stand firm on the word of God. But again, I was more new in the faith at that time. So I, I listened to that and I listened to some of his visitation to heaven and, heaven and all the things. And, uh, and we invited the, uh, Todd Bentley to, to Denmark. And we were with Todd a few days. And, and uh, I was very, very excited about it. And we had like a big, big campaign, a crusade. And it was big in Denmark. And people came from all over. And I was, I was really looking up to this because I was together with Todd Bentley. I had some days with him and his wife, Shona, and Todd's father. And uh, different things happened in that meeting that actually became um, the beginning of the end for me or for some of that movement. Or it, it brought me on a long, long journey. And I want to share that. I've never shared it before. Not, not, not like this. Um, what happened in one of the meetings, I was, I was leading the meeting and uh, I was there and I was uh, leading the meeting and sitting down and I was sitting on a chair and Shona was sitting beside me and Todd's father was sitting on the other side there and uh, Todd was talking. And at that meeting we were sitting and we were talking while Todd, was, uh, Todd Bentley was talking and at one time he invited his wife up, Shona, and she said, Shona, come up here, come and tell your testimony. And she stood up and as soon as she stood up, she was like drunk in the spirit. She was walking like she was strong and woo and dancing on the stage and, and everyone was clapping and everyone was amazed because, whoa, she really knew how to drink of the spirit. And at that time, I, I did not know better. So I was also like, whoa, what is happening there? And she was strong on the stage and people was clapping and so on. And then she walked down. But as soon as she sat down on the chair, she turned around and continued speaking with Todd's father like nothing had happened, like she was not drunk in the spirit. And I was like, what happened there? When I saw this, it was like a knife went into my heart because I saw that she was acting. It was not real. She was, she was really not drunk in the spirit. She was acting. And I saw that a few times during the conference Every time she was up on the stage with Todd, it was like she was drunk and dancing around like she could not walk. And I saw that again and again and again. And it really hurt me. And I, well, where's the fear of God here? What I know, uh, Shana, his, and Shana, his wife there, she had been out of a car accident some years before. And because of that, she had a stiff leg. She cannot bend one of the legs because she had metal in the leg. And therefore, when she's walking, she's walking with one stiff leg. And it's, it's somehow easy to see that handicap. But every time she was up on the platform, she was strong in the spirit or pretending to be drunk to hide that she actually had that handicap. And I saw that again and again. And, and, and it really hurt me because Todd, he was one I, I really looked up to at that time as a big ministry. And, and, and I did not expect that. But I tried to just push it away and thought, okay, okay, let, let's see what, what will happen. And we had the, the campaign and, 
And a lot of things happened. People was falling down all over, and people was laughing and rolling around on the floor. And, and a lot of things were happening, and I, I loved it. I was like, yay, God is working, the Holy Spirit is here. And, and I didn't ask Christians about it because it was what I grew up in. It was what I came from, and, and, and I thought this is revival. This is beautiful. What happened was the conference was over, and, and I was sitting together with my friends and somehow evaluating what had happened and what is the fruit, and we are looking at it. And then there was another friend I had who had joined that conference uh, from the Luton Church. He worked as an evangelist there. And he had been part of the conference, but suddenly he left. So I didn't see him anymore in the end. So I wrote an email to him. And I remember I was sitting at a computer and I wrote to him, Hey Lars, how are you? I didn't see you in the end. What do you think of the conference? And he wrote back, I didn't like it. It was just a big circus. And I was like, what? How dare that guy say that this was a circus? Come on. And, and I really got offended by what he said. And, and I was like, he cannot come and say this is a circus. And, and the first thing that came to me, he how do he dare to blaspheme the Holy Spirit? Because that was how I grew up. If you criticize something, you are in danger of blaspheming the Holy Spirit. And by him calling a big circus, he was blaspheming the Holy Spirit. So I really got provoked. And when he shared that, I was like, who do he think he is? So I wrote back to him on my computer like, you are not allowed to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. How do you dare to say something like that? And I wrote back to him. He wrote back again. And he wrote, Torben, if the Holy Spirit was there, where was the true repentance? Where was the conviction of sin? And then he just talked about some of the things that was the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And now I could really provoke it. Like, he cannot come and, and criticize our conference. And I was sitting there, and I was just ready to, to give him back. I was ready to react in my flesh and give him back and say, how do you dare as an outsider come and criticize what we have done? And I sat there at the computer, and I was ready to give him back. And I couldn't. I was sitting with my fingers on the keyboard, and I couldn't write anything. He was right. Like, he was right. We had had a campaign. We had a lot of people in. We had a lot of manifestation. We had a lot of things. But if I look back at it, there was not like really true repentance. There was no talk about repentance like that. There was no really strong focus on what sin is that divides us from God. And, and, and when I see back at, at, at what happened, I'm like, where was the fruit? And it became the beginning of a long, long journey for me. And I was like, what is happening? And I start to look back at my first uh, five years, six years as a Christian, where I have been around at conference and I've been all over. And I have also done things myself and prayed for people and, and seen things. But I start to stop and look back and, and, and look at the fruit. Look at some of the manifestation. Look at some of the, the background I had. We, we had churches, where meetings where people were running around on the floor and manifested, manifested the Holy Spirit. And we were carrying them out in a car and they drove home and they came back the week after, two weeks after, with the same problems. And, and I start to look at my own life and start to examine my own life. I start to examine my, my ministry and the church. And I was just like, he was right. Something is missing. Something is missing. <laughs> and I, I really got hurt. I really got hurt. And, and I was like, what, what is happening? And I started to really look into the word. And, and then I started to see other place and start to listen to John MacArthur, I listened to Paul Washer and later Paul Washer came and I joined there and, and was part of that and, and, and God, he took me on a roller coaster 
where it was almost like I was in, in one movement, one side, and God, he took me over, and then I went over, and I, I, I started to listen to people, people who did not practice or believe the gift of the Holy Spirit the way they did over here. But it was like getting meat. It was like getting the true fear of God. And just want to say that the first six years I've been a Christian, I've heard many teaching about some of the things of the Holy Spirit and the gifting and the anointing. But I never in my setting heard any teaching about the fear of God. I never heard about it. And suddenly I heard about the fear of God. I heard about true repentance. I, I heard it and I ate it and I took it. I drink it and I just took it in and in and in and in. And I just found it and, and, and I just took it more and more and more. But after some time, after a year or two in this, I, I had a special moment where we, we had a meet in our home and uh, Suddenly a woman fall down and a demon manifested. And before that, I would just have like come out and I would cast the demon out like I've done before. But this time when the demon manifested, I, I run downstairs instead in my house. And on the way down, I said, God, I don't like it. Stop it. I cannot control this. And there it was like the Holy Spirit just said, Torben, what have you done? You have just one, went from one side over the middle of the road and went to the other ditch where you had thrown it all out. Because in my whole proceed for the word and the truth, I had all the, the work of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Spirit, I've thrown that out. I've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. And he was like, but, but I, I, what is happening here? And God, he, he took me to a desert period where I was like, but what to choose? Shall I choose the spiritual manifestation and all of this? Where I, I, a person, where I talk, come from, where I feel there's a lack of the fear of God and lack of true repentance and lack of, of so many other things of, of this, the word and word and word and word. Or, where it's only about the spirit, or shall I choose the word and the word and the word and word and, and, and not have the spirit? And I felt I needed to choose. And I was in a young boy in a roller coaster. And then I, I was looking for people who were spirit filled, but really in the word. And I, I met, uh, found David, Paul, uh, no, David Wilkinson first. And, and I listened to David Wilkinson, who was very radical here in America. And later I found David Pawson from England. I listened a lot to and I took everything David Parson because he was like really, really solid in the word. But at the same time, he believed in the gift and he was spirit filled. And I listened a lot to him and I went to England and met him many times and, and also became a friend with him. And God, he took me on a journey that all in all was like five, six years. And, and it was a journey where I learned a lot. And I, I'm, I'm thankful for that journey. I was thankful for what God showed me. I was thankful uh, for everything. And we start to experience how the, the Spirit and the Word came together in a new way. Um, and, uh, and a lot of things happened. We, uh, we continued. And then we, I started to, to see God work in, ama in an amazing way I've never seen before around Europe. And we started to start the uh, house fellowship. We saw people get safe and set free and heal and, and beautiful things happen and start to live the book of Acts, the life we were longing for. And God, he started to speak to me a lot about different things. And at that time, we came to 2008. And I've been following Todd. A little on the side, but not so much anymore. Uh, it was only like a few times a year I was in seeing, hey, what is Todd doing? And uh, suddenly, 2008, the Lakeland came. And uh, it was all over God TV and Lakeland Revival. And everyone in, in my network in Denmark, they were so excited and they jumped in a plane and they flew to Lakeland. I know of 30, 40 people close to me who jumped in a plane and all went to, to Lakeland. And they were very excited about Todd and about the revival. And, and they were like, whoa, look, guy, God, he can use a guy with, with the background he has. God can use one with tattoos all over. And it was interesting. I was like, okay, yeah, but God did, 
Todd did not have the tattoos when he was doing ministry in, in Denmark. So those tattoos were something that came later. And, and, and people did not know that. And, and, but the way they talked about it, it did that, okay, what is happening here? So I went in from Denmark where I was living at that time and, and I was falling in the revival. And because of the five, six, seven years I'd been on, it was like God, he showed me a lot of things, things I haven't seen before. I did not see only what was happening at the Lake like Revival. I was seeing what was missing. How the, 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 the focus on sin and, and repentance and true repentance, things you, you, you recognize in every other revival, how, how that, was, that was really missing. And then I fo- started to follow Todd again. And then Todd Bentley, he, he talked a lot about the different angels who came to him and his visitation. And he talked about... Especially when you talk about one angel called Emma, it it really hit me because I remember back in the time, 2003, when when Todd, he was in Denmark, there was talk about how he got a prophecy and a warning uh, that a false angel should come to him and he should be careful and not receive them. And we know Galatians is talking about this. Paul is saying if if even an angel comes from heaven and preach another gospel, then don't follow those. So I saw Sonny Todd, he talked about Emma, Emma, and, and because of my background and my journey, I just like, come on, guys, something is off here. Can you not see it? And, and the whole thing where, where the, it was almost like the discernment was just gone. Like, where, where do we find women angels in the Bible? Where, where do we find angels called Emma? <laughs> And, and I was, uh, at that time, doing like uh, going in and checking, what about the Emma? Do you find more of that in the Bible? And, and I actually found that the only thing I found with Emma, if you just write Emma on Wikipedia, you find that that is the name of a, of a Buddhist god, <laughs> Japanese Buddhist god called Emma. And some of the signs by that God have to deal with laughter and people falling down. And some of the signs also you see had to do with, with healing and other things. And I was like, what, what is happening here? <laughs> because of my background and, and because of everything that happened, I felt God, he started to speak to me in Denmark. I said, Torben, you need to send out a warning in Denmark about what will happen in Todd Bentley. And, and uh, because when Todd was in Denmark, there was, there was articles with, with Todd Bentley and, and me together. And, and it was a big thing when Todd was in Denmark. I have an article here where it's written about uh, Todd Bentley and my name. And, and we were all, me and Todd, we were like put together in Denmark. And again, we are the only one who got, us, got Todd, to Bentley, uh, Todd Bentley to Denmark. And, and because many people in Denmark, they, they flew to... to uh, to America, to Lakeland, I felt a responsibility in it because I was the one who, in the first place, introduced Todd Bentley to Denmark because we invited him to Denmark. And I, I God really came and said, Tom, you need to say something, you need to say something, you need to say something. And I want to say, I am not a heritage hunter. I am not a guy who go public. I'm not a guy who go up with names and against this and this and this and this. Like, I've been uh, a, a Christian now, a disciple of Jesus, for 24 years now. And in those 24 years, there's only two times in 24 years where I've gone public and said something. Like, and one of the times was Todd Bentley. And I actually wrote an article. And I would say many things also happened with some church in Denmark where we saw bad fruit. And, and it was a long journey. Many things happened in those eight, eight years or seven years that led up to this. But then I felt God said, you have a responsibility. You have to say something. So I wrote an article in our Christian newspaper in Denmark. In Denmark is a small country and we only have one Christian newspaper. So it was something many, many people read. And I translated the article, and I just want to read it to you, what I wrote. And that was 2008. It was in June 2008. It was uh, a few months after the Lakeland Revival started. I think it started about April 2008. 
And in June, a few months later, I wrote this. And it's a little, I will maybe not write it like that today, with that way. Uh, it's many years ago and 11 years ago, and I've learned and we have all learned. But I just felt I should read it as it was. What I wrote there in the article 2008 was this. Warning against a new movement. Warning against Todd Bentley and the so-called revival. That is the headline. And this is what I wrote. I will start saying that I have 100% for healing, deliverance, baptism with the Holy Spirit, signs, wonders, and miracles. And I am for revival and the supernatural. And I do not write this because I'm against this or just want to be against everything and just want to be skeptical. I do also not write this in jealousy or for many other reasons people may think. I'm writing this in the love to the word of God and to the truth. And I know that this will come as a shock for many and especially that this is coming from me and this is not easy for me. But I feel a responsibility and therefore this letter. I am one of the few in Denmark that have been person together with Todd when he was in the Jesus House, Denmark. I was one of the few who got to know him back in 2003. My personal meeting with Todd and that I since have followed him and learned a lot due that I need to write this. I sadly believe that Todd Bentley have another spirit and that some of the things he practiced come from new age which is shown by the manifestation, the teaching, and the view of angels. The Bible warns us against receiving another spirit and say that we need to discern the spirit because there's many false spirit slash prophet that want to deceive and even desolate. Personal, I believe that God had given Todd a gift and he started good. I also believe that some of the healing that happened is from God. But I still need to warn, especially when I see many Christians jump with both, both legs without discerning if what is happening is from God or not. Something you need to know. Emma, which is the name of the angel that is now following Todd, came from Japanese Buddhism and is the name of the God of the underworld. God, Todd was in the beginning of his ministry warned against false angels that will come to him. But he did not receive that warning. And short time after, Emma came and have followed him since. And that was again back in 2008. I don't think he, he talked so much about it today. The manifestations we see with drunkenness, shaking, etc., and healing is actually some of the same manifestation we see inside Hinduism and Kundalini Yoga. So we should not be cheated by that. Much of what is happening in this revival we don't find in the Bible. Where do we find angels, female angels in the Bible? Where do the Bible talk about holiness and maturity as something that can be transferred by laying on the hands and when I wrote that, that, that came back to some of the things that happened in Denmark with Todd and his testimony where he, God took him on operation table and put that in. The best way to see if something is false is to study the real deal. With every revival we see up to the age, there have always been a strong focus on Jesus, the cross, sin, repentance and humility in front of God which we don't see the same here. If you do not get cheated by the miracles and the manifestation, but just consider what is happening biblical, much of what has been said and much of the revelation and the visitations is actually directly against the word of God. So my advice to you is don't be too fast to let anyone lay hands on you. Because spirit can be transferred by the laying on our hands. Let's all stop and test out of the word of God so that we will not be deceived. 
and let's pray for a true revival and outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Torben Sonnegård. So that was my article that time, and I want to say it a little different today and so on, but I know it's very strong, but I also know God, he worked in Lakeland. I know there's many good things that happened. Even there was bad things, and I know it was a mix. And I know today there was also focus on repentance. I know there sometimes was a deep focus on that and the cross and all of that. So I know that the letter today was a little out in one, one side. But I felt I needed to be clear, and I felt I needed to say it with what I knew at that time. And I wrote that article. And I got problems. The week after... The same Christian newspaper gave out three big pages of the Lake Lang in Florida. One big page here of how the fire from Lake Lang have now fallen in Copenhagen. One page here about a guy from Norway, a leader there, how this is happening in Norway also, and this is a true outpouring of the Holy Spirit. One critical answer to my uh, article a week before and how I was wrong, I was wrong, I have not been there, I should have been there, and I was wrong. And then there was a picture here of my warning the week before. So this came out the week after, and when that came out, as a young boy or 11 years younger than I am today, of course, it was hard to read that. I was like, oh no, what is happening? Everyone is against me. And I read this, and I, 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 I took the newspaper, and I walked out, went out praying, and I was saying, God, what is happening? God, what is happening? Everyone is against me. And there, I just had a moment. I experienced God smiled. I experienced he smiled, and he said, you did it, my son. You spoke, you did it. And even everyone in Denmark was against me. I was so excited. And when I say everyone, people was real against me. I got phone calls. Torben, you are finished in Denmark. You are ashamed to our country. You will never do ministry again. I have close friends who said, Torben, how can you criticize the Holy Spirit like that? You will never do ministry again. Your ministry will die from now on. I had a church I've been speaking in a few times. The pastor of the church, a woman, she wrote to me, Torben, I'm ashamed we have a person like that like you in our country, a person who against revival. And, and like I, many doors got shut when I wrote this. But God smiled to me and said, you did it, my son, you did it. And at the at same time, he said that this revival would fall down. At that moment, I knew it's just a question of short time, this revival would fall down. But what happened? I wrote this, the, my article, the week after, the week after this came. And the week after again, the 23 of June, there was a special day in the Lakeland Revival where Bill Johnson, Joel Anod, Peter Wagner, Rick Joyner, some of the biggest leaders in, in America, they stood on the stage and they lay hands on Todd and they prophesied over him. Prophesied that this revival are going, this is from God, this is going to go all over the world, this is just the beginning. And when they prophesied over Todd the week after, a few days later, I got a lot of new emails and people like, who are you, Tom? Are you bigger than those names? And, and, and of course, I was, okay, am I wrong? What is happening here? And, and fear came in. But I got one phone call that really cursed me. But now I need to just go back. I need to jump one year back and share something else that happened so you can understand why this is so special. One year before all of this, I was uh, back in Denmark, and, and there was a summer camp, a big camp in Denmark, and me and my wife, we felt God wanted us to go to that camp. 
And uh, we are ready to go, but we did not have any money. We did not have money to go there. We did not have money to stay at the camp. And, but we felt really strong God said that he wanted us to go there. So we packed our suitcase in, in faith and were ready to go. And then a few days before we should go to the camp, I got a phone call. A woman called me and said, how are you, Tom? I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes, I'm fine. Tom, do you have any problems? I said, always, always problems. I've been thinking of you the last, last days. Anything I can pray for? I said, I don't know. What. I said to the woman on the uh, phone, hey, are you going to the camp? And she said, yes, hey, me too. Let's meet in the camp and we can talk more. Okay, and she put the telephone on. Five minutes later, she called me back again. How are you, Torben? And I, I, said, I, I, I said, I'm fine. No, I feel there is something. Are you okay? I say, okay, I am okay. Do you have any problems? I say, always, always problems. He said, what is it, Torben? What, what can I do for you? I just feel the Holy Spirit say I should call you. Is there anything? I said, I don't know. Torben, um, do you have any money? Mm. Do you have money to go to the camp? Uh, no. Hallelujah, I knew there was a reason I should call you. Tom, I will pay for your camp, I will pay for your stay, and I will give you $200 for the food during the week when you come to the camp. I said, thank you. Hey. And I put the telephone on, and I went into my wife and said, Lene, we got the money, let's go to the camp. So it was very, very clear that God, he opened the door and God wanted us to go to that Bible camp. And we went to the Bible camp and I was walking around there. And one evening I went into one of the big meetings. The meeting was finished. I was not part of the meeting. I did not know what the people spoke about. And I was sitting there, standing there in the back and I felt God said, go up and get prayed for. But I did not know why they called people up. I did not know if they called them up for altar call, who wants to give their life to Jesus, come up here. I did not know, but I knew one thing. I knew I needed to go up. So I went up, not knowing why they called people up. And, and I stood up there and I said, pray for me. And a guy came and he prayed for me and he prophesied over me. And he gave me a very, very strong word. And one of the words was, five prophets should come to you. And five prophets will step over your doorstep. And when they step over your doorstep, you know that they are sent from God. And those five prophets are going to help you to know what direction to go. And it was a very special word. And I was walking around and praying a few hours that night and came late to bed. And when I left that conference, I left with that word. And I was thinking, who are those five prophets? What is it God he wants to do? Who's those people who will come and, and, and speak to me? A year later, all the things happened with Todd Bentley. All the things happened with the lake land. And I felt I stood very, very alone with this in Denmark, especially with all the things that happened here. And then one day, after all of this, I got a call. And I took the telephone, and it was a known prophet from the Pentecostal movement in Denmark, an older man, uh, and he's, he's in the 70s, in 70s, um, and he was very respectable. Everyone knew him in Denmark, everyone respected him, but I was not part of the Pentecostal movement, so I've never met him face to face. But he called me and he said, hey, it's Anas, over and so on. And I was like, hi. And I was like, oh, he's calling me. And, and I felt like a big boy, Joss, and that big prophet was calling me. And he said, Torben, I want to thank you for your article. Everything you said is the truth. God has shown me the same. And it was first time I really got somebody who actually supported me in, in this. And, and he was a big name in Denmark. And I was like, whoa, thank you. And, and it was really good. And then I was like, uh, thank you. Do you want to meet? And he said, yes, I would love meeting you. Nice. Uh, I can come to you. When? When's the next week? Okay, I'm coming to you. When's the next week? And, and I was so excited that I was going to go to his house next week and meet him. The day went on, and, and uh, I was coming to Wednesday. Wednesday morning, I was sitting on my computer and just writing some emails and preparing before I was going to meet that, that prophet. And suddenly, it was like 
it came very strong. I felt God said to me, you are not going to his house today. Uh, yes, I am. No, you are not. Yes, I am. No, you are not going to his house today. And I was like, what? But, but I have an appointment at 3 o'clock. I need to go to his house. No, you are not. And I was shocked, and I was sitting there a few minutes like, what, what is happening? And then I got a phone call, and it was him again. He said, Torben, something came up today. You cannot come and visit me anyway. But next week, I'm in your city speaking in the Pentecostal church, and I will come and meet you next week before the meeting. Can we say that? And I said, yes, come, come and meet me. And then I put the telephone on, and suddenly I remember the prophecy. Five prophets should come to me, and they should step over my doorstep. And when they step over my doorstep, I know this is from God. If I've gone to him that day, he have not stepped over my doorstep. So for me, the whole step over my doorstep was a really confirmation that this is from God. The week after, he came and he stepped over my doorstep. And it was one of those moments you just know God is speaking. And he came and we spoke. And he said, Tom, I thank you for what you are seeing. And, uh, and then he told, he asked me, Tom, what do you see God is doing in the church today? And I told him some of the things I see God is doing and what God is building and so on. And then he said, Tom, I've been waiting five years for this day. Five years ago, God showed me that the church as we know it is going under. It's like a big ship that's on the way down. Water has come into the ship and the ship is going down. But God is calling people out to create lifeboats all over the place. So when the big ship is down, there's people who can save the rest of the people so they don't go down with the ship. And he told me a lot of things about this ship and what that ship was and a lot of details. And he told me a lot of things. He also confirmed that the lake land would fall. But he said that thought he was not finished. And after some years, he would come up again. And when he come up again, the next fall will be even more bigger than the last fall. And that this is a, sh a, a kind of a sign for the church that when Antichrist is standing on the stage, the church will not have discernment to see what is wrong. And it's a wake-up call for the church. God has allowed it. And he spoke a lot of things about what is actually happening right now. And he spoke that, I think a few weeks later, everything fell down. The Lake Line Revival was over. It came up that Todd had had an affair with, with the, one of the women who was working there, Jessica. It came, a lot of things came up that he had a problem with alcohol and drinking, and when he was there, he was drunk. <laughs> Not by the spirit, but drunk. <laughs> and a lot of things came up, and it became a big, big... Um, Shock for many people. A big talk happened about the church at that time and about the, also the lack of discernment at that time. How, how could we have big, big, big church leaders who were standing there and prophesying over him just some weeks before that this is from God, taught his holy man, the way he loved his family, the way he loved his wife. And I want to say this, not to criticize those people today, because again, I don't know where they are today. And I want to say, I've also prophesied things that have been wrong, and I'm still learning, and we all make mistakes. But I also want to say that the stronger we, the more mature we are as believers, the more we can expect for each other, the less we can expect people to do mistakes. And I think it's a wake-up call for all of us that when all of those leaders prophesied over Todd at that time, that the truth was none of them at that moment, I don't know where they are today, but none of them at that moment was able to hear from God. And I think it's a wake-up call for all of us to say, where are the true prophets? Where are those people? Try to imagine if one prophet, one guy will come there and could actually see what was happening. 
to, could see behind the scenes the sin that was going on. But none was able to do it. And even me, I was not able because I had, I had no idea that this was going on. So I'm not saying that, that I knew, knew all of this because I did not know all of this. And it was a shock for many at that time. And it seems like, okay, it was a shock and it just died up, out. I continue doing my own thing, doing ministry. We started the last Reformation in 2011. It became a beautiful movement. It spread all over the world. We came to, to last year, 2019, and uh, beginning of last year, we went through a hard time as a family. We experienced a lot of persecution in Denmark on national TV, and they changed the laws in Denmark, and, and God brought us here to America seeking asylum. We are now in America seeking asylum. And, and I, I, I felt in many ways God called us to America, but I didn't want to go to America, but then a lot of things happened, and now we are here. And... When I came to America and step on the American ground here and, and, and I, I start to look up to what, what is happening, happening here. And when I came in the beginning of 2019 here, it was the 10 years day from the fall of Lakeland. And at that time, Todd Bentley actually stepped up again with a big, big stadium meeting in, in, in America. And, and there was many people who endorsed him at that time. Big, big, big names. I don't want to say the names there here because now we come a little closer. But there are big, big names who, who lifted Todd up and said, now he's there. This is going to happen. It's going to be beautiful. And I saw some of those videos with, with some of those people who say, this is this. And God is giving a new chance and it's going to be a big revival again. When I saw some of those videos, I just need to be honest. It really hit me very, very hard. Because when they said that video, God, he brought me 10 years back to the prophet in my living room 10 years ago. Because what he prophet 10 years ago, that thought he would come up again, but there would be a new fall. And the new fall would be much worse than the last fall. And he's going to shake the church in America. And it's a sign how far away we have come for the truth. And there's many more things that were said that time. I cannot say now. I, I need to say it when the time is. And I saw all of this happen. And I was like, whoa, it's happening in front of me right now. This is what was prophesied 10 years ago. And what happened? It happened like it prophesied. Todd Bentley, he was out again. He was doing things, and now it fall down even worse. The sin is so much worse. A fair lot of things have happened. And that is why I do this video, because I, I, I feel God is saying something to the church here. And I, I believe there is something that is much, more deeper than what I've seen in some of the videos, where people are addressing Todd and addressing some of the issues. If I want to take four things uh, and address four things that I believe is the problem in all of this, and one of the things I left since I, I learned since I left the prophetic movement the last years. If we look at the Todd Bentley, for me it is very, very clear when he had an affair with Jessica in 2008. He should never have been allowed to ministry again. A leader in church should be a man of one wife. What is repentance? Todd Bentley had an affair while he was married. He went in, Rick Joyner took him in and started to counsel him. And he got married with Jessica. But I cannot see no matter how you can, I cannot see how we can trust the word and say that that is a marriage made in the Lord. I cannot say that. You cannot have an affair with another woman and then just, before, just because you get married and pay on it, that means that that marriage has been done in front of God. 
We need to look at what repentance is. If you have an affair and you sincere and truly repent for that affair, you stop living with that person and you run away and you run back to your wife. And I would just say that I know here many people will maybe think that it's too radical, but I think there was where everything went wrong. We should, people should have helped to restore Todd back to his wife, back to his kids. People should have helped him to understand what true repentance is. And I think that is a thing that was wrong already there. And that was the reason I, I was just done with it. And I know many, many, many other people was done with it when they saw that. Second thing, lack of discernment. We really need to test things. In this article I have here, where one of the leaders, he wrote about how the fire have, have fallen in Copenhagen. He wrote there in the end that what we experience in Denmark is the same as Florida now. And this is all over the world. And I believe we are standing in front of the biggest revival the churns have ever seen. But then he also say that the Holy Spirit is like a dove and it's so easy to fright the Holy Spirit away and we should stop pointing fingers and speak against this revival. Said with other words, stop discerning. Stop asking Christian. Stop going in and say, hey, maybe this is not for God. And, and there is a fear in the church right now, a fear to greet the Holy Spirit, to talk against the Holy Spirit in a way that we receive wrong spirit as being the Holy Spirit. My question is, what is worse? What is worse? To have wrong spirit coming in and say that that is the Holy Spirit, is that also not a kind of greeting the Holy Spirit? We need discernment. The Bible says, test every spirit. See what is from God. We need to have discernment. Now, I'm not talking to those people out here because, yes, I agree that there is people out here who is testing and trying and against everything where they also throw a Holy Spirit away. I'm not talking about this side out here. Now I'm talking to this side, the prophetic movement. We need discernment. We need to be better to test things. <laughs> and I know it's difficult sometimes to test. There was a prophecy that was just given over Denmark just a few months ago here in America. And the Danish newspaper wrote about it. I was so excited. Whoa, big prophecy, revival, revival, revival. The next four years there'll be revival in Denmark. And people love it. Why? Because it's tickling people's ears. Of course you love it. But that guy who prophesied over Denmark a few months ago, he was all over the newspaper, in Chris newspaper in Denmark. Everyone loved him and he got a big ministry because everyone loved that word. But on, in four years when that revival had not come, people have forgotten who that word, what about that word and who he was. But he got a few good months and people love it. Woe unto you when everyone speaks good about you. They also did that about the false prophet. Where is those prophets who can not only speak about revival and revival and revival? Because I know Denmark, I lived in Denmark, I lived in Denmark for years. And I know what God is saying to Denmark. He say, repent, Denmark. Stand up. Don't, don't adjust to the world. Stand up and be bold and don't be like the world and get sin out of the midst of you. <laughs> Come back to the true gospel. This is what God is saying. God is not saying just continue as it is and it's going to be revival. And we need more discernment. We need to come back. And I, and, and I know it's a few years ago in my journey in the prophetic movement and, and when, when I went through that journey, one time I, I, I listened to a New Year speech where somebody was prophesied over this year what God wanted to do. 
And when I heard that prophecy, I was so excited. I thought, next year, this is going to be the year of the breakthrough. This is going to be the year of the harvest. This is going to be the year of the flood. This is going to be the year of the fire that's going to come down. This is going to be this year we have all longed for. And I heard that sermon and I was so excited. I was so excited for that sermon. Until the sermon was over and I took the tape and I saw it. And I saw it was five years old. I've just listened to a five years old sermon. sermon. Prophecy. Did it happen? No. And every year is the same. I just, I believe in the prophetic, but I believe that we need to be stronger in discernment. We need to test it. And we need true prophet out there who can prophesy and who can also discern. Third thing, but that is actually the most important thing, that is the gospel. When we look at the gospel, we need to examine the gospel. And that was the thing, what the gospel is. That was some of the things God, he took us on our journey. I don't see the sinner's prayer any place in the Bible. In the Bible, Acts 2.38, it was repentance. We need to understand what repentance is. And then it's the baptism. In the name of Jesus, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the Holy Spirit. Baptism is not just a symbol. Baptism is the forgiveness of sins. Baptism is washing away sins. Baptism is bury that body that is slave to sin. You die with Christ and you rise up with Christ. Baptism is where you really cut off the old man, where you can walk in the freedom Christ has for you, where you are no longer a slave to sin, but a slave to righteousness. Baptism is where the true freedom is. Together with repentance and faith in God. And then you will receive the Holy Spirit. There was a leader who fallen in Denmark. Big, big leader. is public, so I can say it. A big leader in Denmark who fallen in sin just a year ago. And a woman contacted me who had been having an affair with that guy and asked if I would help them. And I, I did not trust I, I, I was not sure that it was real, that woman had experience, and uh, we need two and three testimonies uh, to verify it because it's against a leader in the church. So I said, before I need to go into this, I need, I need some proof. So she sent me all the text message, messages between those two. With, there was naked photos. Everything was there. Manipulations, lies. When I read those text messages, it, it, it hit me. It hit me. It hit me. And I was crying and I was shocked. Can, can this go on in the church? Can, can this really happen? And I went to other leaders in the church in Denmark for the movement and said, you need to, another movement said, you need, this is what happened. You need to do something. But everyone was afraid to do something. And that guy is still doing ministry today. But in one of the things he wrote that really hit me was he wrote to her, the woman he had an affair with, I have shown you a side of myself only a few people know, a side I have learned to live with. When he wrote that, God just showed me something. That guy... I believe truly, truly, truly he is so sincere in his love for Jesus. I believe he is so sincere in his repentance in the beginning. I believe he loved Jesus by his whole life. But I also believe that the lack of the gospel we see in the church today where baptism has been transformed to just a symbol. Look in the Bible, everyone in the book of Acts, they got baptized right away. And don't say, what about the robber on the cross? It was before the cross. The robber on the cross did not get baptized. Like the woman at the well, like everyone before the cross, no one got baptized before the cross. But after the cross, everyone got baptized right away. Even in the middle of the night, the response to the gospel at that time was not ask Jesus into my heart or repent and faith in God. The response was the one who believe and baptized shall be saved. They got baptized right away. 
And in baptism, you bury the old life. And I have seen again and again and again the last years that because of the lack of the gospel in that ministry's life and in Todd Benzie's life and other people's life, people start the walk in sincere faith, they start the walk loving Jesus, they start the walk even speaking in tongues, they start the walk with healing, miracles, signs and wonders. But because they don't understand the baptism and the true freedom that Jesus did not come to save us in our sins, but he came to save us from our sins. They have had a side they have learned to live with. They had a hidden side where they do ministry and look at porn. They do ministry and have an alcohol problem. They do ministry and have other issues they have not dealt with. And they had that hidden side. And one day it come up to the open. What do you, it happened in the hidden place will be shouting for the rooftops. And they fall. Why do they fall? Because they need the gospel. And I would say it took me six years to understand that. I was preaching the gospel. I was healing the sick. I was casting out demons. But I was not walking in the freedom in the beginning. But when the true gospel came in, hallelujah, when I experienced that freedom from that sin, it changed my life. And I've been free the last 20 years or 18 years. So I want to say to people out there, in the whole talk there have been, that I want to, okay, I want to say with Patricia King, I never met you personally. Dr. Brown, Mike Brown, I met him. But all the things, the way some of you have handled this, I think that is really beautiful. And I have got a deep, deep respect, again, for the prophetic movement because of what had happened the last weeks, a month with Todd Bentley. I would say deep, deep respect. And I have been wrong. There is people who really love Jesus. There's people who have the fear of God. There's people who really, 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 really love God. I don't know all of them. I don't know what they're preaching. I haven't actually never seen a teaching with some of those guys. So I'm only talking about how they have handled this case with Todd Bentley. But in that case, deep respect, honor, and there's people there who fear God, who love Jesus, and want holiness, deep, deep respect. But in all the talk there have been, I've never heard anyone talk about what I believe is the true issue here, and that is the lack of the gospel. I think talk, Todd and many other people need more than submission and good counseling. I believe they need the gospel. I believe they need true freedom. And we have seen hundreds, even thousands of people Church people get truly born again the last years when they understood what the true gospel is. And I hope that all the things that is happening with the church now, with taught and everything, will give us a time to go back and see what is the true gospel. Where do baptism fit in? Not what our tradition is saying, not what our movement is saying, but what the Bible is saying. The last thing I want to say is deliverance. I just very short. The true gospel is needed, but we also need to cast out demons. It's not enough to... How can, how can we have manifestations at our meetings without casting out demons? Because many of those manifestations we see and we saw in Lakeland and other places, I truly believe you saw that manifestations because the Holy Spirit was working. But I saw those manifestations as demonic manifestations. And those manifestations needed to be cast out. And that is some of the things God has shown me the last years. Years ago, when I saw manifestations on my meetings and other places, I would stand and say, more Lord, more Lord, more Lord. Now when I see the same manifestation, I will sit down and say, come out in the name of Jesus, and I will cast those demons out. And I don't want to go deep in that. We have already done a whole video where we talk about that with false spirit in the church and, and all of that. And I'll just send, put a link in to get out this video where you can go in and look at those manifestations and the lack of deliverance. And that's what I want to say. And I, I, I want to end up and say, those names I have said, 
it's, many of them is years ago. I don't know where they are today. And, and it's not just to point fingers. It's just to say, let's wake up. I believe that we need to go back to the gospel, and that is where the thing is. I believe we need to just say, okay, we need to discern it. God taught experience with heaven. God took sin out and put holiness in, in him. Was that from God? No, it's not. Why? Look at what had been happening. It's, it's easy to discern by the fruit. But it's not only that. Most of what had been prophesied, we need to go back and say, have it happened? If not, then it's not from God. And I really hope that my video to you will, will give you uh, freedom to step out. Freedom, you who are in the prophet and in the charismatic movement, to step out. Because what me as somebody who comes from outside into America, who have not been part of those movements, I have nothing to lose because I'm not invited so many places or I'm not part of it. I have nothing to lose. But I see there's a lot of fear in some of those movements where people are afraid to step up. People are afraid to talk about what the true gospel is. Afraid to go in and say what baptism really is. And I got somebody write to me just a few weeks ago. Hey, Tom, what is your view of baptism? We are afraid because you don't fit into the box. And no, I don't fit into the box. But I've seen the freedom. And I've seen this is the word of God. And I want to send this video to you to say stand up. You who are true prophet out there, you who see things, stand up. You who left one side of the movement, I also want to say to you, don't get discouraged and go to the other side and throw the baby out with the bathwater. We need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is real, but it's not everything that is from God. So don't go from one side to the other as I did, where I almost throw the baby out with the bathwater. God bless you all out there. If you have not seen our movies, seen our movies, The Seven Days of Winter with God, Last Five Minutes, The Beginning of the Life. I know it was a very, very long video, but I hope that they will speak to you. Take some time in praying and fasting and, and maybe start with the gospel also. Look at the book of Acts. Look at how they are sharing the gospel. You don't see the sinner's prayer. You don't see people just asking into your heart. Look at the sign of a true believers that John is saying you cannot continue in sin because the seed of God is in. But it's not enough. You need to bury the whole life in the baptism. God bless you all out there. Love Jesus. Make disciples. Have a good day. Bye-bye.